say something by myself and then bring him on. Okay. Just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Carter Mason, the CEO of JTS.TV, and I'm excited to be here at the NMX Lounge at NAB Show, wrapping up the final day. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a great week. We've got some positive stories coming out of how people are saving money, learning new technology, learning how to broadcast better. NAB is the National Association of Broadcasters. Um, I've had some interesting experiences myself with um, the larger companies not quite being, in my opinion, on the ball with what's going on. Uh, having gone to Sony and Panasonic and saying, uh, are your smart TV people here? Are your PlayStation people here? And them saying, this is not a consumer show. Well, it's the National Association of Broadcasters. What do you use smart TV for? To broadcast content. So it's really interesting to me that they had that perspective. And so it's great to be a part of NMX, uh, to be involved with such a great organization as they're on the cutting edge for new media. And looking at what's going on in the future, uh, the larger companies are really gonna have to get it in line and understand where things are headed, uh, and, or they're gonna miss out. And larger upstarts, like hopefully my company, JTS.TV, uh, will be there to pick up the slack and to uh, capture that emerging audience that's growing and growing and growing. So on today's show, which will last until 12.30 Pacific Daylight Time, I got corrected on that. You guys ever notice this? Just a little aside, people still use PST, which would technically be an hour ago. Um, if you do that, just a little thing, I got corrected. It's PDT. So until 12.30 PDT, we're going to be going here. And so I'd like to bring over right now the wonderfully talented musician, or musician, magician, <laughs> magician, Christopher Karpiak. How's it going, Christopher? Phenomenal. Wow. Phenomenal. Right on. Ooh. Your, so, the cushions move. They do a little. They're, I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. And that's not even a trick. You're like, get comfortable. Yeah. Make yourself at home. So, Christopher, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I do comedy magic here in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay. Um... That's pretty, well, I've been developing magic tricks since I was six, seven, eight years old. A lot of magicians use a lot of the stuff that I developed. Um, so it brought me to Vegas when I, 1999, brought me to Vegas in 1999 and I've been performing here ever since. Nice, nice. So you're at Mandalay Bay. Mandalay Bay, yep. So what time top, are your shows? Top you? floor. Very nice, top floor. Mixed nice. lounge, seven to ten every night except for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Very cool. I'm a big fan of the MGM resorts. I'm staying at MGM Grand right now, so I need to check out Mandalay. I'm and so glad you know all of our nine properties. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, when they comp you, you start going, you know, I have a bit of a blackjack problem. So, well, it's not a problem you if you know, can count to 21. That's true. I know. Actually, it's not a problem at all. I got comped, and uh, I am exactly at break even because I didn't have time to gamble this week. Um, <laughs> so. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, we hear you had a great story on uh, how NAB helped you. We didn't even want to come. One of our friends got us some tickets here, and uh, we showed up. Jerry McCambridge, he's the mentalist over at Planet Hollywood. And we were walking around just being ourselves, having fun, meeting people because that's what we do. Right. Meet people, meet people. Is people attract to us for some reason. And uh, we were walking by a microphone booth. And there was a microphone underwater, and I say to Jerry, as a joke, check it out. It's waterproof. I can sweat again on stage. And he's like, he starts laughing. Lady comes around the corner, looks like she's in like her 50s, 60s, comes around the corner, and starts talking to us about this waterproof microphone, because it was a joke. And then I'm like, ooh, tap shoes, ooh, this, ooh, that. And then Jerry's looking at her with, she has a microphone on. And he goes, I can't wear that in my show because of feedback or because of scratching or because he gave her 23 different reasons. And she goes, you can wear it. You're just wearing it wrong. Wow. I know. So we went <laughs> over. We went over. She introduced us to her husband, 76-year-old husband, right? And she was in her 70s. And I, we were like 50, 60. Oh, she's young. Wow, she looks a lot younger. She's talking about her grandkids being older than me. Uh -huh. so, uh, so we get there and... Her husband shows us that all he had to do was bend the wire a little differently. 
He was about to change out his whole system, $2,000 system, change it all out. We saved with, they didn't even charge us for the information. We awesome. saved two grand for, for coming to this show this weekend. And what were you coming in mind to do? I mean, saving two thousand dollars is awesome, but what were you? What were your intentions? For this? We had no intentions whatsoever. Since we do stage magic, we didn't know how this would help us, uh-huh. how this convention would help us at all. So what we did was we came here just to to look around, just to peruse, just to see what's out there on the other end for broadcasting, and we learned a lot. Also, I mean, we learned we learned that there is more that we can do we could actually start promoting ourselves like this right here we could actually start promoting ourselves on the internet i i love social media i'm on facebook i have over four thousand friends in five different pages so it's like i i love social media i'm not using it to my advantage though not i don't think any not one of my followers have come to my show nice have you ever not not one not i don't think i don't i don't think i don't think one of my followers have come to my show no they just sit there and read about read everything that i because i do everything videos and so they have the opportunity to see it yeah so why come right have you ever thought about doing then a live streaming of your magic i i have and yes. uh, have you done it? No. Or, no, no. you just thought about it. No, yes, I've thought so about happened, it. Like when it's captured on video, like are you, are you worried that they could figure out some of your secrets, like rewinding, pausing, I, stilling? It's the thing about live, if because if you ask any of my any of my magician friends, like Chris Angel, mm-hmm. he's not the, the editing is very important to magicians. The editing is very important to magicians. So uh Unless you're doing a stage show where it is always live, it, you can't do that on TV, and you got to be fresh. Uh-huh. Like I've been right. doing, the, I've been doing the same exact show over and over again for about 12 years. Change something here or there, mm-hmm. that's it. But for 12 years, same exact show. Um, when you when you, when you want to change up for TV, you got to change every week. You right. Do, so there. A long time ago, I, I don't remember the famous magician that said it. He said an amateur magician is a magician that performs a different trick every night for the same audience. Mm. A professional magician does the same exact trick for a different audience. Gotcha. That's a, so. That's a great description, and it makes sense. Yeah. Of you know, uh, and I would have never thought about that until you said it. That you know, you're doing the same show, just you know, tweaking a little bit here and there for 12 years. But it, it does make sense that that's the that would be the magician's. Game, especially here in Vegas. Yes. And uh, so you have part of that show with you, right? I brought some. I brought a couple things. Couple things. Couple things. All right. Can we see? I okay. So I don't know how I'm going right. to do this. I don't know how I'm oh. going to do this. Here, while you I to do. Hold the uh, mic for you. But you're going to be doing it with me. Oh, I am. Well, we need to get a, a, a helper here. We need we to get, get an, an assistant. assistant over here. Who can we bring in? Is Gabby allowed to come up here? No. I don't know. Gabby's not nope. No. Nope. Jenny will come in. We just want you to help be a magician's assistant. Are you into that? Oh, my God, yes. That's the response we wow, get. Oh, Jenny. my God, yes. Right she's, on. She's she's right here. Okay. She's right here. Oh, this is great. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. First thing, we're going to make her up here. Good. Turn the camera that way. Ta-da. She's and there. Now, there, she there she is. Ta-da. Perfect. That was awesome. <laughs> she is. She's good. All right. Um, okay. Let me see. I'm just trying to think sure. of how I'm going to do this with a microphone. You want me to hold your hand? No, I don't know. Is that what magician's Oh, hold on. Mm. Oh, yes. Well, it's <laughs> safe. His own hand. It's safe that way. I don't know who you are. I'm, all I know is I'm Jenny. Else's I, need, I need to hang out with you. I need to hang out with you more. All I know is, all I know is Jenny. Uh, I, I need to hang out with you more. Jenny. I make girls disappear instead of up here. And oh, so am I? Oh, I'm, yeah, she's laughing I'm out loud. Really she really is. Out loud. She is. Wait, am I supposed to? Okay, here we go. So I'm. That's for the kids' shows when they don't laugh. I'm like, hey. Hello, let me see you. Okay, uh, this this trick that I'm gonna do first, if I if I can find it, this trick I'm gonna do first. My friend Morgan Strebler invented. Mm-hmm. It's called liquid metal. Liquid metal. Oh, it's crazy. It's actually I mean, crazy. Um, so assistant. you're gonna be talking. I'm yeah. gonna give the microphone to my friend. All right. I'm good. I'm, dun, 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 dun. I'm talking. And hi, I'm Jenny Curtis, magician's assistant extraordinaire. Awesome. Is he gonna stab me in the eyes with a fork? I'm gonna stab you in the eyes with a fork. Ugh! Okay, yes. let's go for it. Dude, can we see? We got two forks. Okay, we have two forks. Can you hear that they're metal? I hear it. Do can you, you hear, hear that, it? Mr. Sam? Oh, perfect. Great. All right, take a marker. You're gonna need. You're also gonna need a hand or two for a second. Why didn't I think of this? Oh, perfect. 
Okay. Wait for um, it. Here we go. I am I am thrifty. I like how easy this show is. This is a fun <laughs> show. So this is like we can just do this the whole show. <laughs> just yeah, just okay, just good. We're just hanging. Uh pick a fork, left or right? Left. Which your left or my left? Your left. So this one over here. Okay, and what was your name again? Jenny. Jenny. Jenny, put your name right there. Ooh, or the or back. a J or a, um, your initials. Can I draw a pony dragon? Whatever no, you too want. Long. I don't know what a pony dragon is. Jenny. Nah, me neither. Is that one of those uh That's what I draw. Wait, I'll do it. I'll do it real fast. The rainbow sprinkles? I don't think you guys are going to be able to see this. No, they'll see it. It's a pony dragon. Ta-da! Ta-da! Can you see it? <laughs> Go all the way up there. <laughs> that there does not go. come up. Ta-da! Okay, and then I have a, I have a one also. So, because I get one also, put a smiley face or something on this one. Okay. But you chose pony dragon. I chose pony dragon. Right there. Smiley face. Smiley. Or something. Smiley face! Smiley face. It's a really easy, sloppy smiley face. So I have face. one, you have one. Take take yours, put it in your hand just like this for the camera. Right, right, right. And then stare at the camera. Which one? So, that one? I don't I didn't know either until just now. But when I went when I ran up there I figured out which one it is. Smile. Smile. Okay, cool. Now take your fork and twist it. No. I did it wrong. You turned it. Uh oh. Well what did I say? Twist it. I said twist it. So when when I say <gasps> when I say twist it, that's, that's what you, you gotta do. Like a little twist in it. That's what you gotta do, a little twist. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm, hold I'm, on. Pony dragon will stay there for a second. Stick out your finger? Stick out your finger? A lot of people in New York use a different one, but that's a great finger for this one. Okay, stick out your finger. And then watch this. I just do a little Something's happening. Oh my goodness, look at how strong I am. Ooh. What? Whoa. Look at that magic. Oh, oh wait, that's we'll get this in the frame. Is. That's magic. Look at this, look at this. Blowing it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's Wait, crazy. I gotta, now I gotta know. Oh. Oh, we're back to. Yeah. Now we're back to this one. Now we're back to this one. Okay. Okay, so now this is Pony Dragon. I see it. Pony Dragon, this is yours. Okay, so now you gotta concentrate even harder. Is she in the frame? I can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, concentrate even harder. Concentrate even harder. Concentrate even harder. Yeah. <laughs> What? That's crazy. Did it's, you guys see how that worked? Can you see? Uh, yeah, they can. They can see. You know what? Watch closely. Watch closely. Watch what closely. the heck? Watch it. Oh, it just you guys, he's made of fire. It just melts fire. Here, I'm going to straighten it out. Uh, give me your hand. The clean one. Perfecto mundo. Put it like this. Twist it. Like that. Remember I said twist? She did it this time. Oh! She put the twist in it. This one. Try and take the twist out. That's the hard part. Try and take the twist Can't do it. Impossible. I, I can't do that. Wait. Oh! Hulk no, Hogan. that's not. Hulk Hogan's gonna get that out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Look at the little times. This is random. Look at the times. Look at the what? times. How are they? <laughs> Did you like guys see hair. how that? Am I the one being in being magic, or are you guys the one being? Look, magic? look at my hair. Okay, and then one more. I'm just gonna go just like this for the camera. Just like this, like this, like this. Something's happening. Like this. What? There, and that's yours to keep. Oh, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put it on my shelf. I know it's mine because it says Jenny and it has a pony dragon on it. That, that makes that makes a great paperweight. <laughs> it makes a great everything. It might make a great hairpiece. Hairpiece. So I can like stick this. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Oh, hold on. No. Get back in the camera. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, dun, dun, dun. That's, that's liquid metal. That's liquid metal by, right on. by, by okay. Morgan Strebler. Morgan Strebler. I didn't ask him if I could use it. I texted him all night long and said, can I do your trick? Can I do your trick? And he never answered me, so... So you assumed yes. I'm hoping it's okay. I've always heard better to ask forgiveness than permission. That's why I used to so steal bikes when I was a kid. Oh yeah. 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 It's you easy. tell your friends, you know, what what you get for Christmas? Your bicycle. My bicycle. Yeah. Thank you're, you. You're, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So did you bring anything else for us today? Are you want me to do more? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, why not? One, one more trick. One more trick. Just gonna keep doing magic. One more trick. One more trick. All right. Well, then you gotta do. We gotta do my my specialty. I'm known for cards. That's. I'm really not known for. Forks. Forks. I'm not known for forks either. Oh, oh good. Perfect. I have heard that spooning leads to oh, forking. Oh, I get a pen. Spooning. That's actually on Morgan's shirts. This is that's the nastiest <laughs> Sharpie I've ever seen in my that's, life. That's I on all of Morgan's. That. We're going to do, this is the one Deb told me that she wanted me to do. She wanted me to do a balloon trick. So all right. balloon trick with cards. I like Balloon it. trick with cards. Okay, perfect. Uh, brand new deck of cards still sealed. Yes, I see that. All right, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this away. All right. Again. No problem. She's got our microphone for both of us. Just gonna open it up just like this. Dun, 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 dun. Your badge isn't showing. So I mean I'll forget your name, Jenny. Jenny. 
Jenny you can Curtis. Call me Jenny. Are you uh, are you related to, to Tony? I am not. Tony Curtis played uh, Houdini once with Jennifer I, Lee. Was uh, we're related with Bess. by heart. Yeah, that would be awesome. Or Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm not. I'm my or, own Curtis. I think they're even related, aren't they? We're gonna get rid of these cards. Goodbye cards. It was fun while it lasted. And look at this. They're all in Ooh. alphabetical order. Perfect. mundo. Jenny, what's your name again? Jenny. Is it Jenny with an I or a Y? Why? Because I like to know? Because you like to know. <laughs> you said why. Wow. Okay. I get it. Oh, right. this is my I'm kids, slow on the uptake. These are my kids' jokes because I was told I wasn't allowed to do bad, well, my, my favorite, jokes. My favorite joke is what do you call a snail on a ship? What do you call a snail on a ship? A snailer. <laughs> <laughs> what about the four snails that robbed the, the turtle? What, what about Four them? snails robbed the turtle. The cops came and he said, what happened? He goes, I don't know. It happened so fast. <laughs> okay, here we go. Take your card, any card. Pick uh, one. Doesn't matter. I've I seen this trick one. before. I want this one. Okay, look at it. Show everybody on the camera land. I won't look, I promise. Did you show everybody? Oh, oh, a better idea. You have a marker. I have a marker. So that you can tell that one oh, apart from all these others. Yeah. Put your name, phone number, times and dates. Your boyfriend's not around. That's all what? I need. I know, I know. Ready? This is how here I get. Goes. This is how I get phone numbers. Are you tweeting over here? I am. I am tweeting. There's over people here. complaining about the show already. Oh no! no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to Done. get people to you know live. Blow on it. <laughs> you know what that does? Dry the marker. Everybody thinks it dries the ink. <laughs> it makes the deck hard. Okay, ah. here we go. Just say stop at any time. <laughs> Just say stop at any time. This is you. Just say stop at any time. I know. Stop. <laughs> Okay, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Say stop at any time. Stop. I'm gonna keep going. Stop. Stop. Okay, say stop, stop at any time. Oh! <laughs> stop at any time. Perfect. Put your card right there. Right underneath the six. Right underneath the six. Makes it easier for me to find. I, I didn't that. see that. Do you guys verify that? Put your hand right here. Put your hand right here. Ba bam. Ba bam. Ba bam. All right, perfect. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these balloons to find your card. Ooh. Pick one. Ooh. Anyone one. but that one. There's two of them. That's perfect. There's one. <laughs> There's, I got too much stuff in my hands. I know. I'm going to have her I hold would... the... Uh, can she hold more things, please? Awesome. I got a fork and a microphone. Oh, I forgot that she had the fork. I have the fork in my boot. <laughs> Jenny's awesome. <laughs> Wait, say that into the mic. Jenny's awesome. <laughs> I want her to come to all my shows. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now, balloon to find your card. Now, a lot of people think that when magicians do card tricks, they have control over the cards, right? Mm -hmm. So that I put them all in the box. I have no control whatsoever now, none. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to even make it tougher to have any control. Bigger? Bigger. I use clear ones for my protection. This seems like it's not a children's show. <laughs> it is a children's show. Did you hear that? It's not a children's show. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can. This is not. That's not. Hold on. Are you watching? I am watching, Bob. Watch. Okay. What? Look at that. Is that cool? Can they see that in TV Can you land? guys see that? <laughs> Ta da! Beautiful! I know, but hold on, that's not even the trick. We still have to find your card. We still have to find my card. So we're gonna reach in the box and all, uh, and gonna pull out. Oh, what the what? Pull out a card, wrapped, balloon wrapped, card, phone number. Well, yeah. phone number. Here, can you, can you read it? Because it says, oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> oh, hi oh, hi Perfect. And that's yours to keep. I get to keep this? Huh? Yep. Shit. I don't, right need on. It. I don't need it anymore. Wait, can I oh, that's me. get applause? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. That's exciting. Her name. This is my name. Jenny Curtis. That's my All name. Right. Well, before I bring on my next guest, what would you you know, promotion. Tell us. Again, Mandalay Bay. <laughs> Mandalay Bay. 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock every night except for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And uh, are there any... I know, tell everybody, show up on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. the best days to show up. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Because I'm not there. Right on. Oh. <laughs> Great self-promotion yeah, right going on right here. Right arm. Yeah. Right arm. <laughs> no, so, I actually say that to people. 
No, they come to the bar and like they'll have a great time. And I go, don't forget Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Come every Tuesday and Wednesday. And they're like, why? And I'm like, I'm not here. They'll come back on a uh. day that I'm there and they'll go, we came back just because it's not a Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh-huh. So That's it is awesome. actual great self promotion. And you had great delivery with it because you got me going right on. Wait a second, caught myself again. <sighs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll make sure that next time I'm here, it'll be a Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm yes, please. <laughs> Come on up. It's top right. floor too. Top, top floor. floor. So great view. Overlooking the city. So right on. so that's my distraction. I I like do a card trick and I go look birds and they'll be like oh what? Where? Yeah exactly. Oh, like she. Birds. She's an awesome assistant. <laughs> Jenny. Jenny Curtis right? Hi, Curtis. Jenny right? Curtis. Jenny Curtis. Jenny Lee Magicians Curtis. Magicians assistant extraordinaire. Close. Oh sorry. And Road to NAB show. Yeah. Team member. Team member. Right on. So, uh, hey, Rick. Rick, are you ready? <laughs> You're ready? All right. Thank you so much, Chris, for, thank for you. coming in. Jenny, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. For being the Thanks assistant. Thanks for bringing me on Oh, here absolutely. Now. Absolutely. You were <laughs> fine. We needed, we needed somebody. So come out to Mandalay Bay, I not thought. on Tuesday or Wednesday, 7 <laughs> o'clock, and see Christopher Karpiak. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Somebody left a pin for live TV. Pen. Uh-oh. It's now mine. All right, Rick. Yes. Carter. Buddy. Get Carter. That's right. Coach Carter. Coach Carter, get Carter. Welcome back, Carter. Welcome back, Carter. All right, I'm here. Is it Calvert or Calvert? <laughs> I don't know why. It must be a TV thing. Calvert? Nobody ever called me Calvert. Really? It's until video came around. <laughs> and so it's Calvert. 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 Like Lord Calvert, the whiskey. Calvert. All right, so Lord I'm Calvert founded Baltimore. I'm here. No with relation to me. Uh, I'm here with Rick Calvert, New Media Expo NMX. Doesn't it just roll off the tongue? Yes, NMX. Tell us the about media revolution. NMX. Um, well, people watching probably know this already, but uh, in um, but I invited a bunch of people from my Twitter and Facebook. Oh well, hello, so, people you know. that. Um, don't know me or us or whatever. They should anyway. They should. Well, uh, hopefully. Um, in 2005, I'd start a blog for fun uh, called The Real Ugly American. It was a political blog. I like to argue about politics. Nice. And then um, one thing led to another. I was building an audience. It was fairly successful. Uh, I wasn't making money, but somebody sent me an email and said, um, what's it cost to advertise on your blog? And I thought, wow, I could make money. This could be my job. So right on. I need to go to the trade show for that. My day job is running trade shows. I've been doing that since 1997. And so I started doing the research for the blogging expo. I, I thought it would just be political bloggers. I didn't know there was any other kind of blog right. back then because I don't come from the tech side and I don't come from the media side. And as I did the research, I realized, oh, it's not just blogging. It's podcasting. It's web TV. That really wasn't even a word yet in 2006. But uh -huh. video, um, I don't even remember when YouTube was founded, but... Um, you know, it's the online video, it's social media. Um, again, that really wasn't a word yet. Twitter right. didn't exist yet. Uh, MySpace was still the big um, yeah. social network. Facebook had not surpassed MySpace. Friendster thought they had a chance. Yeah, right. And, and so I said, whatever those things were, I said, all of those things need to be in the same show. That is what I see as the industry right. of new media. And so that's when how we started what was originally called Blog World and New Media Expo and right. it evolved to, to NMX. Um, and over the years, we've seen podcasting become a much bigger part of the show the last two years. Um, video, uh, although we've done it since year one, and we've done video since year one, uh, but podcasting the last two years has really taken off. We host the podcast awards now. And then video just this year we saw become a much bigger part of the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, we co-located with IWTV. I was just going to ask about that. Yes, but in 2013 um, for the Web TV Awards. That was really important to us. And I, I went to the very first one the year before, and I, and I came home and I told my wife, I said, I feel like I was just at the first Oscars. You know, uh -huh. It was like history happening, and I was in the room. And um, so we co-located with them the next year, and then this year we actually produced the, the award show. Right. We did the red carpet. We produced the show, and it was all part of New Media Expo. And it was fantastic. Yeah, thank you. It was, uh, it was awesome. I was there. I got to accept a couple of awards. On behalf Congratulations. Of on behalf of Continuum, one of our shows on JTS.TV. And it's so it's... Um, it, New Media Expo represents all of those things, New Media, and that's what we talk about at our show. How do we create, distribute, and monetize content on the web? 
Um, and so who uh, gets the most out of New Media Expo? Who should be there? Definitely has to be at New Media well, Expo. Well, people like you should be right, there. Absolutely. If, if, if you're... Um, if you're creating web video, if you're a, uh, a actor, or if you're a producer, or if you're a director, um, which is oftentimes all the same person, right? Right. right. If you do any of that, if you're um, in the business of delivering content over the web, so this goes to the sponsor side, right, or the exhibitor side. If you're a platform like YouTube or Vimeo, mm -hmm. or uh, if you're uh, if you prov provide uh, services and products like the the new tech uh, TriCaster we're using over here, or Livestream, right. or Streamstar, or anybody that provides those kind of services, you should be there. If you do um, podcasting in any way, you should be there. If you're a blogger, you should be there. Um, and, and it's an interesting thing because. It, those different groups all are parts of smaller tribes, right? Um, but when you come to New Media Expo, you realize that we can all learn those things from each other, mm -hmm. right? Most video shows have some sort of blog associated with them. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes they'll do podcasts too. So, so many of us do audio, video, and text even though if I were to ask you, you'd say you're in the web video space. Or what, sure. what would you say if I asked you, Carter, what do you do? Well, we, we try to brand ourselves a little differently from most people that are would you, you use the term web video. Yep. Like we don't say web series on our network itself. What do you call it? Um, we're a premium digital network. Okay. And broadcast outside of cable. So it's all over internet television. So we have mm. a deal with Roku. Um, we've got other smart TV platforms that in the next month or two we'll be rolling out. And so we really consider ourselves the network of the future where cable will eventually unbundle. Yep. And then people will choose what they want. And we are a There's premium. no doubt that will happen. Yeah, it will. It's just a matter of when. You know, you can see it with, like, the cable mergers and everything else happen and, and now the last know, gas. And I know you said you had to deal with Roku, but obviously there's mm -hmm. Google Television, and now there's the Chromecast, yep. and now everybody is making a similar device Apple to TV. Roku. Yeah, Apple Amazon TV. Amazon Fire yes. TV just came out. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, and it, it, it's one of the handicap or handicaps. One of the problems with broadcasting is there's so many different platforms. Right. But you are starting to see some consolidation, and that's going to make it easier. Some for, standardization for startups to you know make it. And but you, know, you guys call yourself a premium digital network. Yep. Okay. So, and I know a lot of people don't call web TV web TV. They just call it YouTube. Yeah. You, people <laughs> say I'm a YouTuber. Right. 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 And. And, and that's part of my point where I'm constantly reminding people in our community, we can't even agree on the terminology. Oh, no. Right? And I think we're several years away from that even happening. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, there is this, there is an industry. It doesn't matter what you call it. And, mm -hmm. and that's one of our biggest challenges is getting people to come the first time to, to let them know why they should be there. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you call yourself a premium digital network or you call yourself a web TV producer or a web series yeah. or a YouTuber, that's really all the same thing to a consumer. Mm -hmm. How many consumers know the name premium digital network? No, or that's even true. web TV. How many people even well, know the word web TV? And it, the, the problem is, and the reason we've had, you know, the the we brand it that way instead of uh, with web series I or get other. It. That makes sense. People use web series to mean a lot of different things. Yep. Yeah. And what we have is very specific TV quality. Episodic video. Scripted narrative episodic shows. But again, if I'm watching a TV show on, on regular TV, mm -hmm. I don't call that episodic video, right? That's an industry no. term. That's an industry. <laughs> that's <laughs> so why we don't call it episodic on our side. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> you know. But, uh, but I mean, yeah. th that's the... Th th one of our, I said one of our biggest challenges as a show is getting people to understand that why they need to come to the show. One of our biggest challenges as an industry, all of us that do new media, is to convey that message to consumers. Yeah. Because people know when they watch YouTube now, right? I bet you most people that watch Vimeo don't even know they're watching Vimeo because right. the video is embedded somewhere else. Embedded. They don't even know what it is. It's not a big destination site. It's more of right. a tool. When, when you watch CBS, you know you're watching CBS. Or TNT, or AMC, or HBO. You know mm -hmm. you're watching it. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube, I think, is the only video channel like that that people know they're watching YouTube. Well, I think that there's and maybe a not when it's in video. They, I bet you, most people just assume every video they watch on the internet is YouTube. You think? As a, a consumer, as a consumer who doesn't know anything about it, 
They're just That'd like, oh yeah, good, I was watching a YouTube that video. That would be a good poll to have to find out what they mean by that. I to figure you. that out. It's like linoleum. Yeah. I mean, it just becomes synonymous with web video. And see, when you look at when you look at smart TV platforms or connected TV or whatever you want to call it, yep. um, it, it gets more defined almost like changing the channel. So it's a little easier. Right. You have your HBO Go app. You know, Roku now has Showtime Anytime as well. Yep. Um, JTS.TV. Uh, yep. You know, and then, uh, you can think of, and, and it's more like changing the channel. Right. And, Which is um, what people realize, understand. Right. And that's, um, and I, I, I just see people don't want to, you know, so many people talk about cutting the cord from cable, and it gets easier and easier. Yep. And so um, those options will, when the options are such that you can get exactly what you want by paying individually, yep. you will see the complete unbundling of cable. And it's what consumers want. Absolutely. We all want any content, I say this all the time, any content on any device at any time. Yeah. We want to watch what we want to watch, when we want to watch it, where we want to watch it, how we want to watch it. Whether it's on my phone or my iPad or my TV or a combination of all three things. Mm -hmm. um, or some device that has yet to be invented. And I, I, and I say, you know, um, if it weren't for HBO and Showtime and the premium networks on cable, a lot more people would unbundle if those were options. I only have my cable package to get HBO. I mean... Game of Thrones. It yep. started when we were out here. I can't wait to get home and watch that. <laughs> yep. Oh, you were already out here? Yeah, I was already here, so I missed I didn't the get season in. premiere. I didn't get in right away, so I was able to see the season premiere. Phenomenal. So, so Chromecast, I, I know you're yeah. asking me questions, but I'm going to ask you oh, questions. So I think the Chromecast was one, was a, a seminal moment in web video. It sold out mm -hmm. the day it came out. Mm-hmm. And there really wasn't an announcement. It wasn't like a, a big press conference, a big deal that, hey, we're coming out with this Chromecast thing. Um, and it sold out instantly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Apple TV's been around for a little while and Google TV. And the Chromecast is such a simple little device. People say, oh, it's just a USB. It's really HDMI. But, you know, you plug it into your TV. Right. That's just, it's so simple to understand and to figure out. I think it... It's 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 a step on the ladder that we were missing before, where people can start consuming web video. Yeah, it's uh, every little tool that makes it a little easier. I would love to see, and I haven't done any research on this. The Chromecast like adoption rates because yep. it was so cheap. Yep. You might buy it, stick it and in, and never you, use it, it, and never use it. And that was one of the things when we were talking with Roku it was yep. like our adoption rate is pretty much one hundred percent. You buy one, you use it. But that's because I don't have a Roku box, right? Yeah. I never came at this from a, a, a technology standpoint. You know, I'm not I'm not a techie. Uh, I used to say I'm not a geek. I'm much geekier now than I was when I started. So, <laughs> by most people's definitions, I would be a geek. Um, but I'm I'm not a broadcaster. I don't come from the media business. I come from the consumer side, right? Who I happened to start creating content about something I was passionate about. I had some success, and that's what sucked me in <laughs> to this world. But I would say most people who buy a Roku box are early adopters. They're technologically proficient. Uh -huh. And the reason you get a 100% adoption rate, like you said, is number one, they're paying a lot of money for it, so they're going to use it a lot relatively. Relatively. And number two, they know how to use it. Because even the Chromecast, there is a little barrier to understanding how do I plug it in? Oh, it's also I gotta plug in the electricity. Okay, now I gotta because I went through this. I gotta go to Google Chrome and I've gotta download the app. Gotta hook it to my network and then now I can stream. And then yeah. so I've got two different um, networks in my house because it's a, quite a ways away from where the where the router is to my back bedroom. So I've got a little booster to go to the back bedroom. It's a different network, and I realized. Oh, I've got to install Chrome all over again on my other right, network. Right, right, right. So, again, that's that's a challenge for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why it only cost thirty five bucks and it didn't work. Like, yeah, who cares? I can't figure it out. Who? I, right. I agree with you, but the fact that they bought the device, yeah, is leading them down the road. Even if they didn't use it, their awareness is now a step higher than it was than the day before they bought it. Yeah, and I would say the 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 thing that I already mentioned about. Um, the unbundling of cable being when you have options. The other thing is when everybody has a smart TV or capability right. of smart TV when easily. It, and it looks like the TV companies have figured out how stupid it was to do 3D. <laughs> yeah. Right? We should be three years ahead of where we are right now with uh, with smart TV. Uh-huh. Because that's what consumers want. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, anytime you've got big networks, studios, uh, record labels, all that, you know, because I'm thinking They're of... They're fighting it. They want to keep their monopoly. They want to keep what they, and they have going on. And here we are at the NAB on. show, right? And, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you heard about the FCC chairman gave yes. a gave a talk here a couple of days yeah, ago. Yeah, why don't you you explain it better than I do? Would, so. Well, I haven't heard the actual talk. I've only read the news coverage, but it sounded to me like um, it wasn't the message the NAB crowd wanted to hear. Oh, yeah, that's what I heard. And and uh, and they, uh, I heard it literally suck the life out of the room from people who were there um, because he said, "Look, you guys are going to have to compete with digital, with yeah. the internet." We're not going to regulate you into being competitive. If they kick your butt, you're going to lose. And as of right now, you're losing. And if you don't change, you're not going to be here in the future. Yeah. In the not too distant future. Right. Which, uh, again, I was, I wish I was in the room because I would have been screaming, yeah, because that's great for anybody who mm -hmm. creates content on the web. That's great for content creators. It's absolutely, it's, it's the the time that we're in and the transition and seeing uh you know smaller companies be able to compete and overnight get recognition at some times and, and be just come onto the stage is probably unparalleled in anything that we've known in our lifetimes yeah um the ability to do that and then but the the way that they hold on the bigger companies are trying to hold on it's just so anti-consumer it actually sets the stage for those types of you know, monetization models for the content to emerge that consumers actually like. Right. When you look at, um, I, I remember I was on a panel at, a, I think it was Catalina Film Festival, and somebody was, they were asking Not about... Not the Catalina wine mixer? <laughs> that would have been stop number two. Catalina for the um, wine mixer. And, but no, we're, and they're asking about, you know, all the, the, uh, the legal battles that were going on and, and the piracy. And my comment at the time was, when you give people a fair model that they pay for what they want to pay for, people will pay. Yep. And the proof is iTunes. Right. When iTunes came out, people were downloading ele music illegally, stealing it, whatever, whatever your views are. And I know some people, well, it's not yet. It's stealing. You know? It's stealing. It's stealing. But there wasn't a, you know, and it's not justifying theft. But they were fighting a model. If they just would have had that model from the beginning, right? There would have been hardly any theft. I mean, there would have been some. Yeah. But there always will be. You know, I don't know about damages because the type of people that are going to steal it when there's an easy ninety-nine cent a song model probably aren't going to buy anything anyway. Right. You know, so from a business standpoint, there was very little to uh, lose by coming w with the model that ended up taking the stage. Something we have to admit on the new media side is that the dollars are just not the same. And this is something to, again, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a history buff. I, I think we can learn a lot from history um, to, pr to predict what's going to happen in the future. Uh -huh. um, and every time there is a revolution like this, and that's what we're in, a media revolution right now, I, I tell people that you know, it's magazines, books, newspapers, radio, television, all being reinvented at the same time. Movies, obviously. Um, it's all happening right before our very eyes. That is so disruptive, and every time, and it, it's making it more efficient. When we, you know, we used to have to watch one of three channels. Mm -hmm. That's all you got. Mm -hmm. And then Fox came along, and there mm -hmm. were four channels. And cable came along, and there were hundreds of channels. And satellite, and there are thousands of channels. Now with the internet, there are literally millions of choices for mm -hmm. us. But every time that happens and it gets more efficient for the consumer so they can watch what they want to watch, when they want to watch, where they want to watch it, cost comes down. Mm -hmm. And when that monopoly goes away, it costs less. And so the money that traditional media has made in the past, it's unsustainable. Mm -hmm. and, and us as new media, we have to, again, admit we're not going to make as much money as they made in the past mm -hmm. because consumers are are not willing to pay that and the system is more efficient we are the ones making the system more efficient we have to understand the money the dollars are not going to be as big mm -hmm. um, but the other side of that coin is your company is you know on the scale what size compared to a, a you know a television network you don't need as many dollars as they ha need yeah. to sustain 
right. all the infrastructure of what they do. Mm -hmm. You can provide an awesome service to millions of people for a fraction of what they can do it for mm -hmm. and make a lot of money. Selling yes. it for a fraction of what they sell it for. Yeah. But they, they still want to keep that big pot of money. And God love them. I would too. Nobody would want to say, hey, take all my money. Sure. So you're going to fight that. And, you know, the, there was a time when the system made sense right, for, yeah. for distributing video. It was as efficient as you could get at the time. At the time. Yeah. And now it's not that way. And it's mm. not. And consumers are smart enough to know that they're not getting what they want. That's why yeah. you do see, um, I think it was last quarter, um, and they always change the terminology. This was the strongest terminology I've seen to say more people left cable. There actually was a tangible number of decrease wow. in cable and satellite subscribers. I believe it was last quarter. Since this is April, it might have been Q4 okay. um, that I saw that. But uh, a, a actual metric that said less people are subscribing to cable or I satellite. I think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Could I cut the cord and just use services like Netflix and Hulu and mm -hmm. Roku um, and I know a lot of people who have cut all television subscription services. Um, and there's no doubt, and there's no turning back from that. It's going to keep happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, I honestly, uh, if I didn't uh, rent the bottom of a house to split level and have my utilities paid for, I would have can't. I would have cut the cord. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. You know, because it's like, you know what? Let's do a group experience, and I'll go to my one person's house that still has cable and HBO besides me and watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know, something yeah, like that. Right. You know, and I know a lot of people will just get the HBO Go uh, password of somebody else, which is also stealing. Sorry to point that out. Um, but it is, you know. If and HBO it's not right, by the way. No. I mean, creating, it, again, you work with content creators, and you know stealing their their product mm -hmm. is not right. Yeah, and um, that's okay. That, uh, you know, you just have to admit it if you're if you're stealing somebody's stuff. Right. And um, co people argue content should be free. Well, then go consume your own content and don't steal yeah. mine. Yeah, I, the the idea of content being free doesn't make sense. Look, if you want to give it away for free, that's fine, but sure. if the content creator has said, this is what I've created and I want X dollars for it or X pennies for it, then either give it to me or don't consume it. Go use somebody else's. Now, again, there will always be people who, who refuse to pay, but don't argue, don't try to argue that just because you want it for free means I have to give it to you for free. And that, that's, uh, you know, one thing I'd like to, to bring up on the concept of free yeah. is um, ad-supported videos. Yeah. I don't think that's free. No, it's not. Well, obviously, this fits into your network, but that's the price you pay as a consumer. I'll put up with your ads in order to get my content, quote-unquote, for free. Is it a better viewing experience to have ads? No. No, definitely not. Um, but that was the model that television invented, sure. and, and, and that, that worked for a long time. But, you know, the supply and demand... You need to We're on live te television. I need to run talk to somebody real quick. No problem. Hold on. I can transition. Dun, 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 dun. We are... Oh, 11.59. What timing is that? It, you know, I, I planned it that way, actually. I said, you got to leave so that Rick g gets out of here. <laughs> so, if you're just joining us now... Or in the last few minutes, I'm Carter Mason, CEO of JTS.TV. Just a story. As in, no ads, just the story. And we were just discussing... Um, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. We were, we were just discussing uh, ad revenue and other monetization uh, for video on the web. And it, one, thing I, one of the reasons I created JTS.TV was that I cannot stand ads. Um, I understand that sometimes you get content because you watch ads. I would rather pay a small amount and not ever have to watch another ad again. Uh, and that would be my preference. And when you're a content creator, the wonderful series creators that we have on JTS.TV, I can tell you that not one of them ever came up with their idea for a show and said, I hope I get to put ads on it. 
you know and ad revenue doesn't pay very well for uh, on the internet at all and so it, it it's a nuisance it distracts your experience uh, as a viewer and it, quite frankly if you do like the type of short form content that we have on JTS.tv uh, if you're going to find that on ad supported platforms, you're going to have to watch ad after ad to get to bad show after bad show. And so we take the best of the best on JTS.TV. And which leads me to the announcements that we have. Yay. Two, count them, two new exclusive shows are coming to JTS very, very soon. The first one is Acting Dead. And I want to pull up on my laptop here and read a little bit about Acting Dead to you. Uh, very excited about this show. Contract officially signed this morning exclusively on JTS.TV starting on April 22nd. Brian Beacock, series regular and series creator. Jillian Clare, Chris Gallia, Patrika Darbo. Paul Nigro, I think I pronounced that correctly, and John Yelvington. And so I wanted to do the series regulars first. Fantastic cast. Um, it's escaping me right now. Jillian's got a movie coming out, and I think I got a message on this. Dun, 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 dun. She is in Alien Abduction feature film right now and uh susan bernhardt producer also recently did the uh the isas produced the indie series awards which jts.tv streamed this is a fantastic team behind this series and it's hilarious it's um i'm gonna read uh the the quick description to you right now Acting Dead is a deathly funny dark comedy about the world of Hollywood zombies. And not just the ones leaving their Botox appointments in Beverly Hills. What if your acting career had taken a turn for the worse and your only option to get a role, to be cast in any number of the ever-growing popular zombie-based TV shows and movies was to actually become one? So it's this is a fun show, and you're gonna love it. They got some amazing guest stars. I want to go through uh, Lori Allen, Coco Brown, Debbie Gibson. You heard that right, the Debbie Gibson singer from the '80s. Carolyn Hennessy, fantastic. J.C. Jewell, Sean Kanan, Sheila Corsi, John York, Peter Voigt. These are all guest stars on the show, um, and more. And so we're really excited for Acting Dead. You're going to hear a lot more about it before the 22nd premiere this month on JTS.TV exclusively. And we also have now The Last Fall of Ashes. This is an incredible show from Aaron Winteringham. And it won in 2013 at the LA Web Festival the Marseille Selection Award. So they got a trip to Marseille. And they've been marketing, submitting this show to festivals and had not released it. And they uh, approached us and said, we want JTS.TV. We want that ad-free viewing experience uh, to be the way that our show is portrayed to the world. We want to be in the association with the other amazing award-winning shows like Acting Dead that I just announced. It's going to be award-winning. It's new and hasn't won awards only because it hasn't been released yet and it hasn't been submitted. So we are very excited for these two shows. Last Fall of Ashes, we haven't set the exact premiere date, but it's going to be sometime before the Vancouver Web Festival on May 2nd, 2014. So uh, right now, if you go to JTS.TV, you don't get preview episodes of those because we literally, both of those contracts were signed in the last 24 hours and officially brought on. But you can see our 30 plus other shows. We, we give out free episodes. So before you pay, $3.99 a month or $39.99 a year, you can see the quality of the content we have on JTS. Um, and we do a three day free trial. So you can even watch our shows and then decide if you want to keep it. And so half of our revenue and I know realize this is turning into a big advertisement, but I'm supposed to have one other person as a guest, and they aren't showing up, so I'm going to keep talking about JTS. And um, uh, half of our revenue goes to content creators, which is very different. Um, 
you know, some of the ad platforms say half of it goes, um, but it's half of a very small fraction. We take half of actual dollars and put it into a pool for the content creators. So your subscription not only gets you ad-free access to the best of the best in the short form independent television world and amazing short films, but it gets you uh, the chance to support the top independent creators, to actually give them something back uh, the the money just is not there for ads. You could have millions of views uh, on an episode and it really would not fund the work, the quality of work that we have on JTS and that you see on others. People are, you know, they're doing crowdfunding in a way. The JTS subscription is kind of like a, a Kickstarter on steroids because you're supporting all of the shows that you watch all at once with your monthly subscription. But we don't like calling it crowdfunding because these shows deserve it. The independent creators deserve to make the money that they will make. And it, right now the checks aren't huge yet because we're a startup, but it grows. And so every subscriber that we bring in makes a difference to the independent creators that we have. It helps them continue their work. It helps them make additional seasons of the shows that you love. And so um, please consider subscribing to JTS.TV, watching the best of the best without ads, and supporting independent content creators, and supporting a network of the future. That as we're successful, you'll see more networks, and you'll see the unbundling of cable, because the options are there. We're an option now. You can watch on Roku. You can watch coming very soon on a major platform that I can't announce yet. Uh, a large manufacturer of, set of uh, flat screen televisions. In fact, probably the largest in the United States. Um, you can check all that. Uh, sorry. I am distracted now because I am bringing on my next guest. And you can quit hearing the huge sales pitch that that turned into for JTS. I want to welcome Coach Deb. Come on. There's a roar of the crowd. Is there a roar of the crowd? All right. Yeah, you get a hug. It's a great show. I like it already. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Deb, Deb, Deb. How'd your podcasting go? How do I do it my There we are. Oh, the podcast was great. And your, mus your musician, I keep doing that. Your musician. I did it too. <laughs> I said musician at the top of the show. So we put him on our podcast. And he, he does sound effects. So even though we he couldn't see you couldn't see the balloon tricks, he had like little sound effects for his cards. So he was entertaining. Yeah. yeah. So was right he good on, on your show? Oh, he was fantastic. He, he did a couple there. of tricks. Yeah. You know, uh, Jenny Curtis from Road to NAB show yes. came on as a magician's assistant. Oh, she was. And an assistant? she was okay. she was just as amazed as right me. There. I was. You know, they had a little two shot of them, so I was able to sit there and watch on the monitor and see the trick so going on. Yeah, I was watching live what's and the, the monitor. I'm like, I want to see <laughs> what's, what's, what's going live on? and what's that. What are over they there? seeing? <laughs> is it live or is it Memorex? I don't know. Just get sponsored by Memorex. Yeah, hey, Memorex. Do they? The things that yes. don't exist anymore. Actually, yes, they do. In they case do. they do, because in case they do, because then they can sponsor then, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did it again. Yeah, just the story. Just the story. I'm, gonna, I'm going to reserve just the show, and I'm going to have like JTSW, because <laughs> all of the plugs that I've been doing for just the show. Well, it is. It, I know it it's is a story, a, but right. it's a show. And I think it about it, it's like it's just a show, no ads. And it's like, yeah, you get to watch just the show. Yeah, uh, by the end of the year, Carter, you know what's going to happen. You're going to be rebranded. Oh, uh, no, nah, I don't know about that. Okay, it's just the story. Because story is, you story. know. Uh, story. But there, there are ele elements of the word show that would go even better as we branch out from, you know, eventually we'll have more than just scripted narrative shows or episodic or whatever you want to call it. Um, then it can be just the show. You know, and then just the show would work. You know, and we, we want to see, you know, we we also want to see, you know, a proliferation of uh, options. We, I've been talking a options. lot about that mm -hmm. so that cable can finally unbundle because it's what consumers want. Right. You know, and then so eventually seeing, you know, JTS sports, JTS, you know, That's horror, cool. JTS after dark. So there won't be a story if it's sports. It'll be just the sports. Just the sports. Or just the show. And see the, the URLs JTS.tv, so we right. could change. Yes, way. exactly. For a different it's network. Very easy. Too, That's why, like with NMX, it's like uh, you know everyone NMX. asks Rick, like, what does that mean? He's like, it's just NMX, just like CES, just like NAB. It's just NMX. NMX. So it's just like JTS. It's just JTS.tv. That's all I'm going to call you. Reference you now. JTS.tv. JTS. That way I won't screw up the S there word. There you go. And that's Show. easier for people story. to find us too. Sure. It's just a story, you know, is the name the of the story. company, but JTS.tv is where you find us. 
Right. And so go there. You know, yeah, JTS.tv. And if you're going to search, you know, app stores or whatnot, JTS.tv is where you would find it. Mm-hmm. Although our Apple app has a slight bug, so we're not promoting it huge. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Uh-oh. if you download it, I'm okay with telling people because we love feedback. But, you know, just know that we know there's a bug this we're fixing. Live. Right. Because the podcast yeah. you were on with us, it wasn't live yet. This is live. People live. are watching right now. Live. So you got to watch what you say. That's why I'm all like, and the big manufacturer <laughs> that I can't tell <laughs> that you That I can't yet. tell you about because they haven't signed the Because, job. yes. 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 So, y- so you having fun on the last day of NAB? Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. You, it's funny how people clear out so much on the last yeah. day. Yeah. I, I had knew. a really close parking spot. I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And I, I knew that was going to happen, but it was still a shock to walk in and see like nothing. Quiet. You know, everybody no went home. Major buzz. Like, Maybe Not I should have done Monday to Wednesday instead of Tuesday <laughs> to Thursday. Might have been a better Well, yeah, because apparently they started on Saturday. This yeah. is like the last day and the last day. It's almost like the leftover day. For but it people. wasn't wasn't an exhibit start on Monday. Yes, that's why we were we started here Monday through Thursday because the exhibit hall was open, but the actual um, educational session started over the weekend. Right. Saturday, so people were here because I was I'm walking. It's Monday. It's Monday morning. I'm trying to get here on time or early, as in you know 15 minutes late. Um, and people are talking about the educational session they went to yesterday. I'm like, what do you mean it just started? I'm not that late. It's 15 minutes. Well, right. well how did you go to a session already? And apparently it was over the weekend. So learning about the NAB show. Yeah. So Deb, tell, tell yeah. us a little bit about your role with NMX. Oh, so I'm helping them with some of the marketing and the media. Mm-hmm. We're basically bringing media to <laughs> new media uh, because they've <laughs> been, you know, you know, Rick, he was just on your show and yeah. he started with the vision of, I want to go to a trade show. I want to learn. And he had a blog and it started with wanting to go and then it not existing. Just like every right. business that has been successful and continues to be successful, it starts and flourishes because they fill a need in the marketplace. So he filled a need in the marketplace. He's like, it wasn't because I was an expert in new media. I wanted to meet all the experts, right? So I brought the Brian Solis and the Chris Brogan and everyone together so that I can learn from them, right? So he created the show where he could learn from them, but um, they really haven't been involved with like a podcast and a media show. And I'm like, Greg, you know, you need to do this, right? And we had blogging software, so we're like, we'll help you up with that and some SEO and, and it just kept evolving to um, doing a lot of the marketing for the actual show itself. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like, I'll just do the pre stuff, do some media stuff, you know, get you on iTunes. And then he's like, what about this? How about this copy? And uh, you, you do some copywriting. I'm like, no, that's not what I want to be known for. Right. I don't want that out there. But I, I've been studying influence and persuasion for, okay, 20 years. I don't like saying that cause it makes me old. But you know, <laughs> since I was two, let's go with that. <laughs> Three, all right, 12. Five. Sorry about 12, that. we'll say when I, since I was 13, I've been studying the, no, but. Um, so that's kind of what my roles become, um, but it's really mm-hmm. being in charge of the media marketing and making sure the media revolution has a media presence. Excellent. So, yeah. yeah. And so, what are some of the strategies that you oh. employ to oh. get that? Down? You want to hear the can good I, stuff? Can I? Can we give it away before you give the? T- I, I will give some good stuff because there's so much. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so some of the things, uh, Carter. As far as you want to know what like marketing wise and social media wise. Okay, here's one thing that easy that anyone can do and I'm amazed that they don't first of all they should show up because that they get more people that showed up here for the people that canceled um, they got plugged and got a ton of exposure so the magician that was just on your show he showed up right a couple other people we've invited to the podcast they just didn't show up and we got filler people there's always the line of people who want to show up and he got all this exposure there's all these people that are now tweeting and facebooking him when we were on the podcast he's like look at he's like showing us the phone he's like look at all these people are talking about me they saw me on the show so first of all it's just showing up you know if you're in media just show up go ask for um you know, getting on people's show and then the biggest thing is getting engagement with the top tweeters and knowing who they are. So like Adrian Ashley. So we had this, we had a big like photo picture, just like the, you know, was the Oscar, the big selfie and we photo bombed it, but it was all the top tweeters and they get this little badge here. Mm-hmm. It's a very important tweeter. And they're very proud of this. So it was, it was her, um, I believe Lori was, was here as well. And then there was this gentleman, Ryan, I think you met him. He was on the Rotan AB show. Um, he's like, oh, I know her because we've been tweeting back and forth because she's one of the, she's beating me in the ranking. So all we do is we just get to know those top tweeters and we give them love. We give them what they want. Right. We, you know, often we'll get a, pa- they'll get a pass to the show because we know they're going to do our social media for that. Sure. For us. So sure. it's awesome. So it's a perfect win-win, you know, and they love competing to be top. 
So we just provide right. that platform to let them do that, and then you're, you're, it's organic. They're not being paid to tweet. They're not being. Uh, they're not. They're not. It's, it's organic. They're real people talking about what's exciting. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. That's the great way to get marketing from and anywhere. Do you know what the metrics are for them being top? Like, is it is it a, an algorithm of retweets and followers? I don't know how they figure out who the top tweeter is. That's a good question. Like, how many retweets or how many follow? Um, as far as I, all I knew is like how many times you tweeted. I don't even know if it was like people retweeting you or it's how many times you're mentioned. Because if you're retweeted, that would count. Yeah in that so that could be that would probably right. be a good way to, to measure that because i know that you know it's uh at the lower level at the higher levels you can obviously see it when somebody has a few hundred thousand followers yep. and they're following a thousand people that's a big you gap know they're an influence and you can figure out their, their influence yep. Yep. when you're at the lower levels a lot of people that are you know you could see somebody with eight ten thousand followers and they're also following eight to ten thousand people and right. all they've done is basically a strategy where you keep following people and yep. you know and you dump the people that don't follow you right. you know and so it's like i have a couple thousand followers followers I think I follow about a thousand mm -hmm. so it's like that's like more impact than somebody who has 10,000 followers but they're following 10,000 right. people right. so I'm always interested in that social media that that real impact because right. people can make it and you can buy fake followers and stuff like that you never know yeah you know and people so used to do that back yeah in the day. often and then, and then one of the things they started doing is that um, they would come up and they would have all these bots following people, getting the follow back, and then they would sell that profile because you could change your name at any time. Mm -hmm. So people would buy an account and then put their name on it. And I'm just like, I get that it shows you, I call it fictitious influence. Like to me, I only followed back people that, people I met or people that engaged with me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that very early on that would limit my growth potential, mm -hmm. but I wanted to really nurture those people that were following me and know those people. Yeah, so I still I still notice that people follow and do the follow and unfollow thing if you don't follow back. Yeah, and uh, you know I oh try yeah, to a lot. I try to tweet follow. out every once in a while. I just say you know, um, if you engage, I will probably follow you back. If you do not engage, I I'm not going to follow I you say back. Exactly the same thing. You know, and, and what's, what's good about that, Carter, is you get people engaged with you because yeah. they're like, oh, she'll follow me back if I engage with her. And then you're getting yeah replies. And then you're having a conversation. Otherwise, mm -hmm. all, all you are are a number in the audience and we've never connected. We've never, you know, mm -hmm. seen each other face to face, you know, had eye contact or shaken hands. And that's not who I want to build relationships with. I mean, mm -hmm. I get so many opportunities because I know people and I nurture that as a real relationship. I'm mm -hmm. not just trying to like collect people for numbers. And, yeah. and that's... I think that's what people get distracted about. I'd rather have someone, a client, just have a thousand people follow them, not ten thousands, because those thousand people they can pay attention to, they can interact with them, they can mm -hmm. give them love the way they could never for a hundred thousand right. people. And I, you know, I started creating um, lists more for the people yeah. Yeah. that I didn't really want to engage with, but I wanted to keep track of. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's like the people that I really want to engage with need to be in my main feed. But the people I just want to kind of keep track of, just yeah. create a list, yeah. like put it off to the side. And then, yeah. you know, I can you scan. Can yeah, and because you, you, you find that if you have 10,000 people you're following, you're going to miss so much from yeah. the people you actually want to see. Yeah. And so I actually need to, I need to pare down my list again. It's Yeah. And I did that on Facebook. Too much. And, and part of it was because I was getting divorced and it was a new name and I was still in business. So I'm like, well, I don't want to touch this profile. So I like, you know, was, I changed the status in the middle of the night, put everyone as off to not get notifications, changed the relationship status, and then started a new account, which was the Deb Cole account. Mm -hmm. And that on Facebook, I love it because my whole newsfeed are people that I know, mm -hmm. they're friends of mine, they're people that I met in real life. Whereas the other one, it's now just Coach Deb. Um, and it's Coach Deb Quonsite because that was the software. That is the, it's the max, right? It, it hit the 5,000. But when I go there, it's not as cool for me because there's a lot of people in Newsfeed I've never met before. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's almost like you give them that follow love back just because they followed you and it's just not the way you do it. It's not real friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, it's like having a stack of business. I mean, if you think about it in real life, it's like having a stack of business card and going, put them in my phone, you know? this one put them in my phone and then that person putting in your phone mm -hmm. and I have a bunch of people in your Rolodex or in your phone that you don't know and you've never met they're just from a business card that's all it is if you're doing the whole auto follow back and no engagement right but that's my soapbox on and that. you know now that you brought up Facebook then I also want to talk about you know the way that Facebook is trying to monetize pages now mm -hmm. I think it's pretty much the kill the value of a like mm -hmm. on your pages because yeah. you're not guaranteed that people are gonna see it and right. that's just really annoying very annoying that you know it's just a terrible model for Facebook to do and I wish 
that there was some way to make people like go over to Google Plus just because you a lot know of people are. they are, but it's not that mass shift yeah. and the whole culture that's needed for yeah. brands to do it yeah. is not yet there. Yeah, it's still Google Plus is still more geek geeks. So, th- but that's how Twitter started. Right? Sure. It, was, it was all the geeks sharing um, content and information and ideas and having a good conversation. So that's what we're seeing is happening on Google Plus where you're seeing a lot of the geeks that were back in the early days of Twitter before it became you know just mass media. It was the geeks and the conversations and, and that's what I liked about it. And that's what I like about Google Plus because you can have really good conversations. I learn a lot of things. It's, um, it's really good for publication and mm-hmm. being smart when you go on radio shows. Like I will always go there right. before I go on the radio because I'm like, okay, what's happening now? And I know all of my geek friends have done the research and they've kind of mashed it down to what the fine points are. And then I know I'm in the know, right? right. So that's what I love about Google Plus. But what I don't like, it's the same reason I didn't like Facebook in the beginning and I loved MySpace is because Facebook was really boring. You know, there wasn't the status updates like we have now and we can engage with people. Right. It was just like, here's the update on a blue and white page and that's it. My MySpace page was active. It had video. You could pull in pictures. There was so much more color and it was live. You, know, you could customize so. a lot better much better now Um, it's very different and uh you know but there's facebook made some good or bad decisions on (laughs) how they they set up and it's like sometimes you can do stuff that consumers don't like and you can get away with it um and i think they got away with a lot because Mm -hmm. there were things about the experience that was consistent because myspace then did get annoying because you could customize it so much yes you had some just ugly, nasty yes, you did. profiles, <laughs> and you know, it's very and obnoxious. Yeah, so you're like, shut it off. There's too many blinking lights on that page. And so I think you know, as far as like the timeline that you know they rolled out with Facebook and other stuff that they did, right. allowing you to customize your header mm-hmm. image, but not you know everything else. Mm-hmm. I think it didn't actually give. Most people would say, I want to do whatever I want with it, but mm-hmm. it probably gives you a better experience. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, you have to have a little bit of control. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I you know I say about. You Right. Like, were we talking about binge watching yesterday? Yes. Show? Yes. A binge big, watcher. Big pet peeve of mine <laughs> I know. Is uh, new shows that are coming out and then releasing all at the same time. Yep. Uh, you don't get the publicity. And has to do it. Right. And because one, they started out that way. Yeah, it's their brand they'll, now. They'll never admit if they're wrong. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad I don't want Netflix to change because I like the fact that it comes out because I'll go and watch a movie, Carter, and I'm like, I want more. I don't want to wait a year for the next. I want it I, like right now. Mm-hmm. So I like Netflix because I get to watch the show and, and if I want more, I can watch it again right now. Do you watch House of Cards? I do. I just finished the last episode of the, the second season. You just finished it? Mm-hmm. That's not a fair question. Oh. Remember. Oh, you asked that yesterday and I still, no. Still I still don't. I totally binge watched it. Yes, in a weekend. That is the thing. Yeah. It's like you know, um, I understand that every human being pretty much is going <laughs> to say that they want it the way they want it. Yep. And if they had a choice, it's not the way it would be. But I think that a show like, you know, for example, I binge watch Breaking Bad to catch up, and then I got it weekly. Right. And I've done that with a couple of shows. Right. Uh, Doctor Who, the new Doctor Who. Oh that way yeah. It is. You know, <laughs> Sometimes you, you're, you, know, you're watching you just want to binge watch. And, and then other times you want the tease of the show the next week. I, I do have to say that there have been times, especially with Breaking Bad, it, it's a dark. And same thing with uh, Kevin Spacey's movie. It's, it's a bit of a dark. There's darkness. And I remember watching one evening. It was like three episodes in. I'm like, I kind of need something light now. It's been a little too. Because they're constantly maneuvering. Constantly like juggling and and little wind hits the house of cards right and all crumbles but you're seeing this and you have almost anxiety each time you watch the show i'm like i need something just peaceful or just funny because this is an intense show and you really have to keep up so in that case you're right it's probably not healthy to binge watch it but i do it anyway because it's available it's just, what what because we can't Right. Perhaps networks are doing a disservice to people from what they really want. 
Yes. Really what they really. You're right. You're right, uh, Carter. That's, yes, so Game of Thrones, that's what I had to do. I'm like, I can't watch this show because I'm dying to know what the net, and I just waited for the whole episode to come out, and then I just watched it. It wasn't even 13. It was shorter. You know, it's like, I, even, with, even with short form, I like the weekly break. You know, yeah. Some people make the argument that the episode was so short. Right. Through the show access, I have a spy thriller, and every week I'm like, you know, all right, I'm ready. You know, and there's been times where I've been busy traveling, and I'm like, all right, okay. Now it's only two days away from new episodes, so I'll wait for yep. the one to two together. Yep. But it's I don't want to wait. I want to find out what's happening on assets. Yeah. Right now. No, and, and it's interesting when you look at the culture, how our cultures change, because we have so many choices now, so many shows, and it and it's very different from back in the day. Like when my grandpa used to talk about how you'd watch a movie and you would go to work and everyone watched that same movie or the play, because that was all you had in that town, right? It was the only movie that came out, you know, the Humphrey Bogart, and everyone talk about it, right? So with Breaking Bad, we almost can't talk about it because we don't know what. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm only on episode two. Don't talk about it yet, right? Well, that's House of Cards. And that's House Breaking of Cards. Bad Same thing. It's like I can't. Out, yeah. Like, and I'm dying to say what happened on the second season. It's like, ah, oh, I, I can't. And that's another thing. It's like find motivation because mm-hmm. I know it's just always there. Mm-hmm. Like. Oh, yeah, and then you didn't and renew I didn't it. To re-up. Yep. And so now I'm like, uh, it's a dumb I don't thing. have time right now to watch 13 episodes. Right. So I'm not going to pay. <laughs> right. If it was coming out weekly, they probably could have got me. Maybe come I can do an hour. Right, right. I can, it's consumable. I can still do an hour. Yeah. Like, they're all there. Right. I don't have to do it. You know, I'll do it when I, you know, the next gap I have in my time. Well, and that's, I think, what I like about just the story, JTS is because it's bite-sized pieces. So we're just launching a podcast um, over on the other corner of this lounge, and we're just doing like eight-minute, we, we call them quickie podcasts. It's social sales seduction, and it's just quickies. We're just giving them quickies because it's manageable, it's bite-sized, and anyone can listen to something for eight minutes. Um, or anyone can, like you said, if, they're, if you're late for, or someone's late for a meeting and you're there, you can watch that or listen to it, right? So... Uh, we kind of want to be that filler for people like in between shows or in between things or for your lunch break. You can watch it. And it, you know what? If you have more than eight minutes, you can watch two episodes, right? right. But it's this nice little bite-sized pieces. And then I think more people will watch that as opposed to giving them an hour. Like I know myself, Carter, before um, I was coming to NAB show, I had an hour and I wanted to kind of get up to speed with what was going on in new media. So I wanted to like kind of watch the most current podcast. But there's like, there were four of them that were all an hour a piece and I had an hour so I either had a choice right either watch a bit of each of their shows and hopefully I watched the best of it right or find four other podcasts that were quickies and that's what I did I chose to literally look for something that was short were shorter segments and I found things under 15 minutes and we're finding it's a sweet spot with people that are just ADD it's seven to eight minutes and then they're just they're done like you're not even paying attention anymore I've been talking for too long <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? What were you saying? <laughs> what? His 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 we name? Were, it's Kevin Spacey's name? What we're doing uh, too is uh, we are looking for longer form content. Right. A lot of it. The people that you watch want that on too. TV, you want that too. Right. So it's like yeah, uh, absolutely. HBO Go and Showtime anytime. I tend to watch on my through my Roku device on my TV. Right. You know, right. longer episodes. Right. The tendency. Yeah. Not that I didn't. Know, like, oh, so you all didn't go out. No, you, you and Ephraim oh, were supposed I to go out. So tired. I felt, you know, and you're all giving me a hard time. You fell asleep on each other. And would you fall asleep to what show? Do you like that? Because I watched the first one, and I mean, Matthew McConaughey, how do you go wrong? But I wasn't... But Breaking Bad, I didn't like it first either. I couldn't get through, like, the first 15 minutes. Here was this guy in his tidy whiteies, like, going through the desert in this, like, mask. I'm like, what am I watching? It was the most depressing show you know, ever in the first 15 not, minutes. Uh, yeah. Like, what? Uh, what? Every episode of Two Detectives thrilled me, but it's very, like, intricate world that they created. 
It seems interesting. Yeah, okay. So it's worth watching. Yeah. Sticking out. The problem is, it's like, it is one of those shows that's not as fast-paced as a detective show might normally be. Uh, and so, so it's different. As tired as I was, I just couldn't do it. It wasn't a reflection of the show. So it's a good show to fall asleep tired. through. That's yeah, what I need. So Thank I you, Carter. <laughs> I do. Actually, I did fall asleep to True Detective like the first time, and I was like, "All right, I don't know." Yeah, yeah. So House of Cards, I cannot fall asleep to, and it's bad because it's so good. Um, I have like closed my eyes, and you know the characters so well, so you, you just hear them. So there have been times like, but then like something will happen towards the end, and I'm like, "Well, now I have to watch the next episode because they just left me as a cliffhanger." You know, I mean, if don't leave, yeah, I'm a binge watcher. I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I know someone who would go to sleep to live shows. We all got a group together again. It was after one of these events, and we went to what's the dancing? Their Irish river dance. Yeah. He fell asleep to river dance in New York City. River dance at a live show. I don't think I could do that. Snoring. Cole, I'm like, I kept elbowing him. He said that apparently his mom used to like take him to shows or drive him around and like movies and whatnot would just put him to sleep. So he, he feels like it's like the rocking chair. It's like he's in, I don't know, back in his mom's room. I don't know. River dance he fell asleep to. River dance. There's a lot of like foot banging on the stage for the river dance. It's a loud, obnoxious, awesome show. It's exciting. Yeah. Fell asleep. During like the big top dancing, like that. No, I can't say yeah. most of our content is shorter form. I've never fallen asleep to a big together. No, of course not. Because uh, it's just the story. And they're all so good. <laughs> they're all so good. The, each yeah. story. Um, story. Uh oh. What? Where are we at? Oh, we're almost done. We're in. It's a wrap. What is that? Do we get any B-roll? Do we get B-roll over like there? Well, like that's I, amazing. Like <laughs> it's awesome. On Justin TV? YouTube.com slash TechZulu. We will have archives of these various shows, and you will be able to rehash all of this goodness if you, uh, you know, miss some of the previous episode shows. You call, you call it each segment a show, right? I'm calling it a show, but maybe I should call it a story. I would say conversation. If I'm going to start something, I'm going to say it's JTC, just the conversation. Cause that's what we joked about an April Fool's joke. We were gonna buy JTA.tv to show how ridiculous an ad. Would anybody go to just the ads? Just the ads. Know, just the ads. Uh, I think they would. <laughs> because well, some would if they were all funny. That's why I watched the Super Bowl. It, it, but if they were just the funny ads. True story. If they were just the funny ads, but if it's all the ads. Uh, Are you gonna watch ad after ad to get the ad? No, ad no. You have to screen. Ads? You have to screen the ads. I, just yeah. that. No, yeah. Just yeah. For Super Bowl, I, I yeah, no and then story. after this, after the Super Bowl, everybody watches YouTube for just the ads. JTA, you should do that. <laughs> JTA <laughs> dot cool. ad I dot ad. I like it. Yeah. Wow, we're, we're the closeout yeah. show. Right this is it. This is the end of the show. The last show. Wow. The Sounds like there should be a song. The Where's show. that guitarist? So yeah, so check out youtube.com slash techdoo. And thanks to uh, Justin.tv. We love you guys. You rule. And uh, thank you, yeah. Efren. Thank you, and Justin. I think you should also go to JTS. You should definitely. Thank and you, Carter. So, all right. Well, I guess that's it. All that's right. A wrap that's a wrap. That's a wrap. NAB show 2014 and NMX. We'll see you at nmxlive.com where we'll actually sell some virtual tickets to the show so they can binge watch or listen <laughs> before they go to the show live. Wow, you like what I did there? I like it. Tied it all together. I you know, I am in marketing. I got to I gotta, I gotta plug in for nmxlive, right? Dot yeah. com. Yeah. Seriously, do that. What? NC. NC. Oh, I like that.